Mohamed Shakira is back with us for more on Archer Exploration. Archer's strategy involves three verticals, reliable energy, quantum computing and human health. We're here to discuss the latter today. Thanks for your time, Mohamed. No problem, my pleasure. So human health as it relates to Archer is very much about biosensors. So can you tell me, please, what are they? What do they do? Yeah, so biosensors, they detect and monitor uh, disease and human health, and they aid in diagnosis and in the management of, of health. So can you explain what the current situation is like in the healthcare world, how biosensors are used, what they are used to detect? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so biosensors form part of a uh, very mature market, the, the global biotechnology market, which is worth over $350 billion. Um, they take up about 10% of that market and they're growing. They're growing because we get older, they're growing because we get sick, and there's a, a need out there for better healthcare management and also for, I guess, point of care for you to be able to understand more about your health and, and how to, um, I guess, diagnose and, and prevent illnesses that, that take too many lives uh, around the world each year. So tell me a bit about how what Archer is doing is going to disrupt this existing setup. So what we're doing is we're printing biosensors, right? So we're, we're able to do this and, and we, we're excited by this. And the, the special thing about that is that you're able to not only produce them cheaply and, and, uh, and scalably, and what I mean by scalably is that you can print them anywhere you want in the world, right? So you're not fixed to one place, and, and that way you can make the technology a lot more accessible. Can you tell me what the materials are that go into a sensor? What would someone need to have to be able to print it? Of course, so definitely, because you need to print something, right? So uh, the materials that we have and the materials that are in our inventory of our wholly owned subsidiary carbon allotropes, one of those is, is graphene, and we also have the luxury of uh, graphite from our Kampuna deposit. And we've recently showed that we can take this graphite that we have and we can turn it into graphene and then we can print this graphene into electrodes that are the fundamental componentry of biosensors and you know, get them to do what biosensors are meant to do, which is, which is fantastic. The reason why we're using graphene, and this is one of the very special things about graphene, is that it's the thinnest material known. And for a biosensor to work efficiently and effectively, not just being able to make it cheaply or scalably, but to really have a very sensitive biosensor, you need a very thin interface because that's where the biosensing occurs. And of course, graphene being the thinnest interface could offer you uh, the you know, very ultra sensitive uh, detection limits. So which is really, really important in, in early detection and, and preventative uh, methods. What's the proof of concept? I know you are working with the University of Adelaide on this. Yeah, so we have a very good agreement, a very robust agreement in place with the University of Adelaide, a collaboration agreement that we altered earlier in the year. Uh, and that's part of the Australian Research Council Graphene Hub. And the hub is there really to facilitate that ongoing, uh, say, fluidity between industry and uh, universities. The great thing about that collaboration is we have access to laboratories, to people, to to the equipment, to the printers, uh, to the formulations, to the IP. This, this is very, very important for us, which has you know, really allowed us to, to move very quickly in this space. I mean, like I said, we were able to print biosensors from taking a raw material in the ground to basically pr a proof of concept. And in terms of the business case, what is the business model to commercialize this technology? The good thing is the outcomes of the work from the University of Adelaide led to uh, an agreement with a leading German biotechnology company. They've been around for 40 years uh, and that's allowed us for the first time to have uh, a relationship with a customer facing European company and in the biotech space. And so we're working together with this company to help continue to develop this biosensor with a focus on trying to target really key specific markets for certain kinds of diseases. So Mohammed, tell me more about these markets. Well, the striking thing about the global biotechnology market is that 70% of businesses are located in the EU and North America, but that doesn't mean Australia has to miss out. We have a very well established healthcare network here in Australia, and we have some of the world's leading biosensing experts, which is fantastic for us. And really that allows us to tap into that triple helix model of innovation that system of innovation that we want to use can you tell me what this triple helix model is well it involves three key stakeholders one is the government of course the regulatory bodies 
And the other are research institutes, and that can include academic institutes. The third, of course, is industry. And the key to the triple helix model working is that industry is in the leading seat. The reason that's important is because you're dealing with the public. The public gets sick, and so the government is the regulatory body. With academia, you have access to infrastructure, you have access to expertise. And with industry, well, customer facing and you have access to the market. So everyone plays a key role and everyone has their value to add. So blending business and science, can you tell me what are those key catalysts? What are those next milestones for Archer? Yeah, so for Archer, it's really working and working towards having very solid portfolio of IP because in the global biotech market, in the biosensing market, there are established methods of doing transactions uh, for these technologies, which are really highly reliant on having very strong core IP. So our primary focus is on developing that IP portfolio and continuing to work with our partners in Germany and the University of Adelaide. Well, Mohammed, sounds like a lot happening just in this one vertical alone. Thank you for educating us today. No problem, my pleasure. See you again soon. Yeah.